Hey guys, Jay here with Word of Advice TV, and in this video I would like to show you one of the most common washer problems and how to fix it. Now, as you're watching this, if you realize that this is not the problem that your washer is having, I also have a video of top 10 washer problems, and very likely that the washer problem that you're experiencing is going to be on that list. So if you want, check that video out as well. But anyway, back to our common washer problem. This washer problem typically starts with me coming to the homeowner or the customer's house and the homeowner tells me, my washer will not spin at all, or my washer will not drain, or my washer is draining super slowly until it just completely shuts off and then some kind of error code pops out on the display here. Almost every time when I hear a homeowner giving me a description like that, it's very likely to be a plugged drain pump filter, which is typically on the bottom of front load washers. So these drain pump filters are mainly found on front load washers. Top load washers have filter problems, but they're very rare compared to front load washers like this. And it's always on the bottom, in the front. Although some washer machines, this whole front panel is just one piece. And to get to the filter, you actually have to take the top off and you have to take the whole entire front panel off just to get to the filter. Kind of a dumb design, but some of them do do that. Luckily for most washers, there is a little door like this, an access door, to get to the filter. And really, these drain pump filters should be cleaned every couple of months. In fact, this one even has a sticker on it that says, please clean the filter once every two months. And most homeowners, they don't even know this filter exists until this problem happens to them, and then they get the hang of it. And before you take the water filter out, if your washer machine has water inside of it, you're going to want to get as much water out as you can before you take that drain pump filter out. Otherwise, you're going to have a ton of water coming out. So if you have water in there and your door opens up, just try to scoop up as much of it as you can with a cup or a little bucket. Or if you have a wet wax, that's even better. You can just suck as much of that stuff out as you can. But if your door is not opening at all, if it's stuck in the locked position and no matter what you do, it does not unlock. Most of these front load washers have an emergency release on the door lock assembly. And to access it, if your washer has a bottom kick panel, you can take that bottom panel off. Typically it's gonna be held by three screws on the bottom. Take the three screws out and that bottom panel comes out. And then if you reach under, it'll either be a little plastic tab or a plastic ring that you can pull on, which will disengage the door lock and allow you to open up that door. And on some other washers, if it doesn't have a kick panel like this one, you would take the top panel off and reach in from the top to get to that little ring or whatever you have to pull on to disengage that door lock. So once you get that door lock out, you get as much of the water out as you can. This next tip is really a lifesaver. I started doing this on every single dirty or clogged drain filter that I come across just because it makes life so much easier. What you wanna do is actually pull the washer out and tip it back so most of the water that's left inside of the washer, even if that washer is empty or it looks empty, there's still gonna be a good couple of cups of water inside of that drain pump filter. So when you open anything up, a lot of water comes out. To avoid that, pulling out the washer and tipping it back will cause most of that water to go to the back of the washer and you'll avoid having a lot of water coming out the front. So let's do that real quick before I take all of this out. And I would suggest as you're pulling your washer out, pull it out slowly and just keep looking in the back. Make sure you have enough slack on your water hoses and your drain hose and nothing is getting kinked as you're pulling it out. And especially so when you're tipping your washer backwards so nothing gets kinked. So do this whole process slowly so you don't do any damage. So I got the washer pulled out and this should be far enough so I can tip it like that. And you can either prop something underneath it or you can pull it out a little bit further so it completely stands tipped over so it doesn't fall back down. So in my case, this is not quite far enough because it's falling back down. I think I'll just prop it with something. Okay, so now that we got the washer propped up, we can now continue with cleaning our drain pump filter. If you have a door like this, after you put it down, if you just press down on these tabs, You should be able to just take that whole door out so it's not in the way. This little hose, usually there's a little plug in here. I guess the plug is missing so the homeowner just tied it together with the wire to kink the hose. 
which works just as fine. But if you do have the plug, generally that hose is going to be going right here and sitting up on top. And what this hose is for, it basically bypasses the drain pump filter. So if your washer is full of water, you can take this little hose out, take the plug out, and drain as much water as you can that way before you take this main plug out. Because once you take this plug out, if the washer is full of water, there's going to be a ton of water that's going to gush out at you. And even if you drain it completely using this little hose, still, when you take this out, there will be some water. So be ready for that. Put a towel underneath your washer to catch as much of it as you can or have a wet vac handy. So I have a tip back. My washer doesn't have much water in it, or if it does, the water is going to be in the back of the washer now. And we can safely take this filter out and see what it looks like. And here you go. So as you can see, there's a bunch of gunk in here. There's toothpicks, plastic, and whatever else people leave in their pockets. Feathers, coins, bugs. But it's not completely plugged. This is actually not that bad. I see some that are completely plugged up, especially if somebody just washed a rubber back rug, you know, with the little plastic, or not the plastic, the little rubber little balls on the bottom of the rug that stick to the floor. That stuff tends to come off if you wash it in the washer and all that all those little white rubber beads end up inside of this drain plug filter and all over the hoses inside of the washer it just creates a big mess so once you have this filter out you just want to clean all that gunk out from inside of it if you have a rubber glove it's great or if you're not disgusted by all of that you can just grab it with your fingers i don't really like to and i typically don't have rubber gloves on me so i just use a screwdriver and maybe some needle nose pliers so you just kind of scrub that stuff out of there. There's like hair and stuff in here. It makes everything st stuck to the sides of the filter. And that's where the needle nose comes in. If it gets stuck, you just yank it out. I went to a barber's house once. And this filter, a filter like this, was completely caked with a bunch of hair. And then inside of the filter, on the inside, there was just a roll, like a neat roll of dollar bills and five dollar bills. That's the only time I've ever seen that. A filter full of money. That was pretty cool. And it doesn't have to be super pristine and shiny, just so all that gunk is out of there. If you want it super clean, you could just rinse it underneath the faucet. So once you got it clean, you just got to put it back in, tighten it nice and snug, put everything back together, and you should be good to go. And if your threads have troubles getting started, like getting tightened down, a lot of times that means that there's some gunk inside of the threads. Or if you have a filter like this, this little notch right here has to line up with the tab that's inside of the housing there. After that lines up, then it'll tighten down real nice and easy you'll feel it. And there's little stoppers here that stop it once it gets tight enough and you can't over tighten it. And that's it. You get it all back together, you put the door back on. We'll take our washer prop off. And this washer will start to drain real quick. We got the washer down and pushed back in. And now let's just do a quick test. Let's go to normal. I'll fill the washer up with water and then see how fast it drains it. So we got the washer filled up, and let's just put it into our rinse and spin, which is essentially our rinse, drain, and spin cycle. And we don't want it to rinse or spin, I just wanna see how fast it'll drain to make sure it's draining fast. So I'll take off the spin, no spin. This is just gonna drain it. And then we'll go ahead and press start. This is much better. It's draining really good now, really nice and fast. And that is how you take care of one of the most common washer problems. If you've ever had a problem with a drain pump filter like that before, it would be great if you could share your experience with us in the comments below. Or if you have any further questions or suggestions or tips to anything that I've already said in this video, 
I would love to see you in the comment section below as well. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to mash that like button on the way out and I'll see you next time. And if you're still here and not in the comment section below, the other day a man offered to sell me a coffin. And with everything that's going on in the world nowadays, I told him that's the last thing I need.